Okay, so what I'm going to do for you guys today is I'm going to give you uh, in one video three skills which are going to really help improve your RUBE uh, overall skills and it's really going to help you to massively increase your chances of passing the RUBE section or the RUBE uh, exam. So three things. These are the three key skills when it comes to RUBE. These are the sort of most important skills when it comes to RUE in terms of the marks. Okay, before I do that, I just want to say that I am, uh, I have spaces available for uh, my online uh, English classes. These are exam preparation classes. Um, you can apply just via the link in the description. Uh, I only have limited spaces, so uh, if you want me to teach you, um, go ahead and um, apply as soon as you can. Okay, so in terms of the skills, what I want to show you very quickly. So first of all, just take out your daughter and make your heading R-U-A-E and then make your heading after that uh, in your own words, word choice and comparison question. So in your own words, word choice and comparison question. Now, these are the three skills which are basically the most important in R-U-A-E in terms of the marks. Okay, now what I'm going to show you, all right, I'm going to prove that to you just by showing you a couple of different um, RUE papers. Now, this is the, this is true for both National 5 and for Higher. All right, and uh, this is true for National 5 and Higher. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of different Higher papers. But again, this is also true for National 5. And okay, there we go. Where are the questions? Okay, sweet. So we don't have the text, but we've got the questions. And then we've got the questions here also. Yeah, do we have the questions? Yeah, okay, cool. So here are the 2015, 2017, and 2018 exam papers. So for those of you who are new to National 5 um, or higher, uh, you have what's called the past paper, which is old exam papers, okay? So, I am also bigger. See the man. All right. So, what we need to look at is look at how many questions, okay, fit into in your own words, word choice, or uh, the comparison. Okay, now we know that the comparison is always at the end. It gives you five marks, okay? So you can see five marks, at the end again, five marks, and at the end again, five marks. Okay, so five out of the 30, one thing you should note, the RUAE paper is 30 marks in total. Five out of the 30 are this comparison, okay? Now, besides the comparison question, what you have is the other two, which is in your own words and word choice. Now, let's go ahead and just very quickly see how many marks we have for each one. Okay, so there is in your own words. That's two. And there's four. That's in your own words again. Two, four. And okay, so there's four for that. Okay, now look at how many are word choice, as I said. Any question which says analyze language means you can analyze word choice. Any question which says analyze language means you can analyze word choice. If you didn't know that before, you should write that down. If it says you can analyze language, it means you can use word choice because that is the easiest. Okay, so we have language here, four marks. Excuse me, we've got four. We've got four again, that's eight. Okay, nine, 10, 11. And another four, that's 15. So 15 out of the 30, half are word choice questions. And then I think I said four, four are in your own words. So 19 out of the 30 are word choice and in your own words. And then you go ahead and you add on the uh, five, that's 24. So 24 marks out of the 30 in this paper are those three, okay? And just very quickly, I'll show you here also. Okay, so in your own words, two, five uh five seven nine okay nine so you see again one third in this paper is in your own words language word choice you got four uh two that's six uh plus four that's ten ten okay ten so again ten almost ten in your own words almost ten word choice yeah twenty plus the five you can see uh five that are comparison so you can see again this, these three, okay, are the most important skills that you can learn when it comes to RUAE. 
These are the most critical. So the most of your time should be spent drilling these skills. Okay, most of your time should be spent drilling these skills and they will also help you in terms of your essay and also in terms of your uh, set text because uh, your set text and your essay, both of them make use of uh, these skills in different ways. Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, excuse me, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give you just a quick sort of overview of these three skills. So please do take notes and um yeah take notes yeah so this is this is going to be like a i'm giving you like a cheat code here i'm giving you it for free you know what i'm saying <laughs> so don't judge my pink cup you know what i'm saying man listen men can wear pink and all that too <laughs> okay so oh open up your jar and now make your heading in your own words all right in your own words Okay, now if you've watched the RUE video I've done, this is like sort of the updated version. All right, this is going to be like the updated version of the RUE video that I made. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is go ahead and write down this. Okay, this is the definition. This is what a neural words question and a neural words question actually is. So the point of an neural words question is to explain the meaning of a sentence using different words. So here is a sentence. Tell me what it means using different words so look at this sentence tell me what it means using different words okay write this down yeah so pause the video write that down so again the definition is tell the marker the meaning of the sentence using different words from the original okay okay next purpose so this is the point of the question what is the point of the question what are they checking for they are checking for these two things so again write these down yeah this should be your next heading purpose they're checking can the student demonstrate can they show that they understand what the writer is saying so if i say something to you uh, which is what you do when you read the text it's the writer is basically talking to you can you show that you understand what they're saying did you understand the meaning of the sentence now the way that you do that yeah and this is the second thing that they're checking for is you repeat what they said the meaning of what they said but you use other words so for example if i said something to you excuse me if i if i said something to you and then i i want to check if you're actually listening to me what i'll do is i'll ask you okay explain to me what i just said i'll say to you explain to me what i just told you all right so and if you can do that it means you were actually listening to me if you can't do that it means you probably weren't so this is what they're checking for in a neural words question. They're checking, can you read the sentence? Can you understand what it means? And then can you translate the meaning uh, using new words? Yeah. Can you like change them? Can you change the words, but keep the meaning? Okay, good. Write that down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing, get myself over here. The next thing is going to be how to do it. So make this your next uh, subheading. Make this your next subheading. So this is how to do in your own words. Okay, and go ahead, take your time, pause the video and write these down. So write them down, write them down, yeah? Now, in school, you may have learned these uh, differently. You may have learned, you know, less steps or you may have learned some different steps. These steps have been created based on um, all of the teaching that I've done. Uh, and with a wide range of different students, including students that are like have dyslexia, students that have um, that are not necessarily uh, naturally good at English, and then students that are very naturally good at English, naturally talented at English, who find it easy. So, what I've done is I basically created these steps based on the student who found doing this the most difficult. So, take these steps, and if you have any sort of you know, like natural talent in English, if you're like good at it at all, then knowing these steps will make you even better. If you're not good at English at all, then knowing these steps will get you through it, yeah? So copy these steps out and um, yeah, take your time with it. Okay, now very quickly, what the steps are, you go to the lines in the question. Okay, what does that mean? It's like this. In every question, you have lines. Okay, this is from the article. So lines 45 to 53, uh, like this down the side of the article 
the passage. It's line numbers. So this is what it means. Go to the lines. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first thing you do. Go to the lines. Then you find a quote related to the question. Then you write it down. Break the quote into sections. And I'm going to show you all this in a minute. Yeah. Okay. So just write this down and then move on. Okay. Okay. The next thing. The next thing. The next thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing. So here are some tips for you guys. So make this your next subheading tips. And what these are basically is there are certain situations where you're not going to be sure exactly what to do, or you're going to need some extra help based besides like the fundamental steps, you're going to need a little bit more help. So here are some tips for you uh, in case you need them. So the first thing is make sure, and these are to make sure you actually get the mark. Yeah, this is also what they're for. So first is make sure you go to the line number in the question. So if the question says go to line 10, but you go to line nine, if it says go to line 10 to 15, but you go to line nine or you go to line 16, you won't get the mark. Yeah? So you need to go to the where they ask you to go. Okay, that's number one. Number two is you want to change as many and also write these down. Yeah, write these down. <clears throat> Excuse me, break these down. So you want to change as many words as you can. This is number two. The fundamental mistake, okay, the key mistake you can make with this question is using too many words from the original, okay? And it makes sense. The question is called in your own words. So obviously you need to put it in your own words here. That's the point. So if you use words from the original too many, if you use too many words from the original, you won't get the mark. So the rule of thumb is change as many words as you can change every word if you can but if you can't change a word then uh, there's something else you can do which i'll get to in a second um but before that what i want to say is uh, you want to make sure you answer the question make sure you answer the question now to do that what you can do is you can take a keyword from the question itself and you can use it in your answer so again just write these down and i'm going to show you exactly what they mean uh, with some example answers okay now the final thing is kind of like what i was talking about which is change as many words as you can that's your rule of thumb okay change as many words as you can change every word if you can but if a word is extremely unique like school politics science news hospital that kind of thing just use the word yeah use the word also obviously if it's like um someone's proper name and you need to mention it specifically. If you can't just say he said or she said or a friend said, then also obviously just use the name, yeah? So basically rule of thumb, change every word if you can, change as many words as you can. But if a word is extremely unique and it's taking you five minutes to try and come up with a, a replacement, just use the original, okay? Just use the original. Okay, so now uh, we go on to some example answers, okay? go to some example answers so write this down make your heading example answer okay and then go ahead and write down the question which i have highlighted for you okay and then go ahead and write down the quote so this is the step that comes after the point of going to the lines you write down the quote okay so now what you'll do now what i'll do is i'll take you through the actual steps so now imagine you've got the question, okay? So you're sitting in your exam. The question says, what does the writer say? It says, go to lines five to six, whatever. I've not got line numbers here, but it's okay. Go to lines. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put it, I'll put it like this for you so it's even more realistic. Okay, so just add that to your, to the question. Okay. And I'll actually even write lines. Okay, so now you, you've got the, you've got the, you're sitting at your exam. Okay, you open it up, it says, you've read the article, it says, the question says, go to lines one to six, and it says, what does the writer say about how animals are treated in factory farms? I'm just going to add to the question. Use your own words in your answer. So add this to your question as well, yeah? Your own words in your answer. Okay, so now what you do is you go ahead to lines one to six, and now you've picked out a quote. Okay, now you write the quote down, like what we've done. Now what you're going to do, okay, is you are going to split the quote up, okay? You're going to break the quote up into parts. Now you can do this by just drawing a line. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to space it out, okay? If you're on a computer, you can space it out. Um, if you're not on a computer, you can obviously just um, put lines in between, okay? 
So you want to space it up into the most important important information. So like the key parts of the sentence, you want to break the sentence up into its key parts. Okay, why do we do this? We do this because, look, I want to show you a comparison. Okay. All right, now imagine if I asked you to break this sentence down for me into your own words. Imagine if I, uh, let me actually put it this way. Okay. Imagine if I said to you, okay, tell me, okay, put this sentence into your own words. Like if I asked you the question. Okay, now I took away the highlight like this. All right. Now imagine you're sitting there in the exam room. All right, maybe you could underline it or something. But even, even if I leave the highlight for you, okay, just for sake of argument. Okay, now look at this. And then think about how you would uh, put it into your own words. Okay, so now you're in the process of doing it. This is what happens to like many students. Many students that I've had, this is what happens. This is the process. They look at it, they look away, try and write it down. They look at it, look away. And what happens is as they're looking, they get lost. Something else catches their eye. They might look at another word. And so they get lost. And part of the process of them trying to translate becomes less efficient because part of the process gets taken up by trying to relocate their place um, as they're looking at the sentence. Okay. Now compare doing this, the difficulty of that, to translating this. Way easier, yeah. Way easier. So that's why we that's why we write down the sentence and we break it up. Okay, and we break it up for a specific reason, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But the reason that we write the quote down is because it basically makes you more efficient, it makes you better. It makes it easier to do because you don't get lost um, looking at the other parts of the paragraph. Okay, so write the quote down and then break it up. Okay, now once you've broken up, start your answer by quoting the question. Remember, that was one of my, tip, one of my tips. So we're going to quote part of the question, which is this. What does the writer say about how animals are treated? So we're going to say the writer says, okay, the writer says animals animals in factory farms okay now we have quoted the question now we have quoted the question and we can even add one part we can just say animals in factory farms are treated if you want to be really specific to the question poorly okay and then we can have our answer which i'll get to in a second okay so We've got this part here because, okay, why do we do this? Why do we do this? You might be thinking, why do we do this? We do this because many times you might not have gotten a mark and your teacher might say something to you like didn't answer the question or missed the question, something like that. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? What it means is you answered, but you weren't 100% specific to the question. And so they didn't give you the mark yet. Doing this, okay, quoting the question, Quoting the question, part of the question, means you are always going to be specific. It means you're always going to be focused on the question. All right, that's the point. That's why we do it. So once we've done this, now all we need to do, okay, why do we split up our answer? We split up our answer because it makes it easier to do the translation. Okay, so we now have uh, different chunks, okay? We have different chunks that we can translate all right so we're going to start one little chunk at a time so first of all in there which is the animals it's talking about the animals so write this with me so in there this is the animals okay this is the animals short lives which just means die early okay so the animals die early in their short lives means the animals die early okay if they have a short life, it means that they die quickly. All right. Now, they never see, okay, they never see uh, grass yet. So, th again, this is kind of short, so you could probably put this into one. But the idea is they never see grass. If I wanted to make this um, even more sort of to this, if I wanted to change it slightly, I could just say also animals do not experience, if I want to say they never see do not experience okay so that would be they never see okay 
And then for grass, I could just say nature. Animals do not experience nature. They never see, so it'd be like this, yeah? So in there is the animals, short lives, die early. They never see, animals don't experience grass, which is nature. Okay, like that. All right, now we'll do another one. We'll do another one just to make it uh, sort of more clear. Okay, so another question. So go ahead and write this question down. What does the writer say about professional football? And then here's the quote. It's already been broken up for you. The majority, like Mark, never made it through the first lap. All right, and then I'm going to split up the answer just so you can see how it works, yeah? So the majority is a high percentage, like Mark, which is the name of the writer's friend. So we say such as the writer's friend. Never made it, which is didn't succeed, through the first lap, which is past the training stage. So you see, take one little chunk at a time. Okay, take the quote out. Take one little chunk, at, break it up. Take one little chunk at a time. Translate it one little chunk at a time. Okay, now there's one final step, which I forgot to mention. Okay, so pause the video and then write this down. Okay, now there's one final step which you need to do, which is especially if you guys, when you're in your exam, the last step, okay, is you want to make sure you go ahead and strike out the original quote, okay? Put a line through the original quote. And what that does, this is after you've done your answer, put a line through the original quote, all right? And what that means is the marker can't, like, have any excuse to say that you have copied something or that you haven't used your own words or anything weird like that, yeah? So you want to make sure you cross out the original quote after you're finished. That way you give them no excuse um, about saying you you didn't do something right or you didn't, I don't know, some, I don't know. Anyway, you get the point, yeah? Okay, so that is in your own words. That is in your own words. It's that simple. Again, if you get lost on anything, just rewatch the video. It's real simple. Follow the steps. Go to the lines. Find a quote related to the question. Write the quote down. Break it up. Take one little piece at a time. Translate it. And then cross out your finished sentence. That is in your own words. Okay, good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to word choice. And some, okay, some final questions actually you can ask yourself. Yeah, just copy these down also as well. These are just sort of some questions you can use to check if you've got the right answer. So this is sort of the final thing I'll tell you. These are some little questions you can ask to check if you got the right answer, which is, does the answer capture the meaning, meaning of the original? Does the answer answer the question? Does the answer use words that are not in the original quote? And does the answer make sense? So if you can say yes to all these things, then you've got a correct answer. Okay, so that's how you can self-assess. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go on to word choice. I'm going to go on to word choice. All right. Um. Okay. So go ahead and make your heading word choice. Look at this, man. I'm giving you guys six months of game yet in half an hour video so okay word choice all right so here's what we're going to do same kind of process first of all i want you to go ahead and write down the heading definition so this is what word choice actually is all right and then i want you to write this down okay so word choice is about explaining the deeper meaning of a word and explaining what the writer is trying to say Okay, the point they're trying to make by using it. So two things, explaining the deeper meaning of a word and explaining, excuse me, explaining what the writer is trying to say by using that word. So write these down and also put the underlined part where I've put it. Okay, now the purpose of the question, this is what it's checking. Okay, this is where it's checking is and again, write this down also. 
it's worth checking is to check can the student break down a word into its connotations meaning related words so connotations is just another way of saying words that are related to the quoted word yeah so for example fire has connotations related words of danger of heat of light knowledge etc 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 things that are related to the word yeah other words that pop up into your mind when you think about that word or also what that word means so for example danger uh, has related words of risk or death or whatever yeah okay so that's the first thing can you break a word down into its connotations so can you do you actually understand what the word means that's basically what it's checking can you break it down and then two can you use that to explain on a deeper level what the writer is saying so if you think about it words the specific words that you use create different meanings all right the words that you use create different meanings this is why we focus on it yeah this is the point of it for example if you say to somebody uh i like you okay and if you say to somebody i love you they both have the same basic sort of uh meaning that basically yeah you have a positive uh, feeling positive emotion positive sort of relationship with this specific person the difference is there's a difference in intensity and also a difference in things that are attached to the word yeah if i like you you could be my postman i might like you i think you're a cool guy because you're on time and whatever and you del deliver my letters and all that yeah but if i love you you're probably my boy yet yeah. you know what i'm saying so and like i i would trust you with stuff that's the point yeah so the words are different they, they have different intensity so you can't just replace a word. So, okay, when it comes to the question, the point is you focus on a single word because it gives a different meaning. Yeah, the writer is using it to make a specific point, a specific meaning. He's trying to say something specific. That's the idea, yeah? So in this question, you're zooming in on those words, okay? And you're saying the writer is using this word to do this or to say this, to mean this. That's the point, yeah? That's what it's checking. Can you do that, yeah? Okay, now, the good thing is, all right, if if at any point you feel sort of nervous or you're having some sort of self-doubt, first of all, don't have any self-doubt, yeah? Especially if you consider yourself one of my students, you can't be having no self-doubt, you know what I'm saying, man? You gotta keep it G, man, you know what I mean? So that's number one. Number two is that these skills, okay, are skills that you use every day, all right? So in your conversations, let me move this real, real quick. So in your conversations with people, all the time you are using your in your own words, as I explained before, when you're talking to someone, you're checking, do, are they listening to you? Do they know what you're saying? We even use it in like our, 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 the way we talk to each other. Like at the end of your sentence, you say, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I just so, told you? We use it, yes, in your own words. And then word choice. We do that all the time, like when we text each other, someone might send you something and they use a specific word and then that will create a certain impact. Yeah, it might make you feel like, hey, why did you say that? Don't use that word. I didn't like that word. Or, oh, snap, she really likes me. She said, use this word. You know what I'm saying? So we do these things all the time. Yeah, you might say a certain word to trigger somebody, to show them you like them. That's the point. So you already know all of these skills intuitively you have them already inside you the point is you just need to know sort of how to like formally express and show that you already have them that's the point yeah okay okay good and also one final thing to give you some confidence if you're at this level higher or not five you're at this level because someone believes that you can uh, you're capable of passing the exam yeah that's the point someone thinks you can pass it and you can pass it, yeah, because I've had multiple students that were predicted a D and then they got an A or a B. It's like common, yeah, it's, n it's normal, it's just a little bit of work. Okay, so now what I want you to do is go ahead and make your heading how to do it. So here are the specific steps, all right, and how to do it. And again, I want you to write these down, so pause the video and write these down. Okay, so again, start the same way. Every question in RUE starts with going to the lines. Uh, lines in the passage, that is. 
Okay, now what you do is you underline words that are related to the question. Give yourself a little selection. So when you go to the lines, all right, there's going to be a bunch of words that you could choose from. Okay, like I'll give you an example. So have a look here. All right, so say if the question was about uh, factory farming and how it's, how it's not good, how it treats animals poorly. Yeah. Okay, there's a bunch of words in here that we could pick. Okay, like for example, we could take, take this even intensive. Uh, we could take uh, short life. Okay, even the word short actually. Take the word short. Take the word uh, uh, lifespan. Take worn out. Overproduction. And so on, yeah? So, the point is, there's a bunch of words that are going to be in the paragraph or the lines that you've been told to go to so what you want to do okay is when you have it when you go to the lines you want to underline okay all the options or the the options that you think you can take now obviously don't underline the whole thing yeah maybe underline um i don't know six or seven something like that yeah different options that you could pick okay now what you want to do once you've done that is you want to look at your options all right and you want to pick the easiest one so from all of these, there's a couple that are quite easy, okay? Like for example, short, 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 yeah? Short, that's easy to understand. Maybe overproduction, it's kind of simple. So you wanna pick the easiest answer. Now, why is that? Because when it comes to RUAE, okay, this is a general game for RUAE. When it comes to RUAE, you don't get marked on complexity. All right, generally speaking, you don't get marked on complexity. You get marked based on did you provide an answer that like fits the like marking scheme? Yeah, basically, did you follow? Did you give an answer to the question using the specific steps, like the steps that I'm telling you to do? Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you go for a word that's very hard or a word that's like very easy, you get the same mark. Generally speaking, you'll get the same mark. So what you want to do is you want to make your life easier. You want to go for the easiest words, yeah? Anytime you can, you want to go for the easiest words, okay? So go ahead, write these steps down. So that's the next thing. Um, Give yourself options. Pick the easiest one, okay? And then what you do is you give the connotations of the word. Give the connotations of the word. And then you do the this suggest. Now again, I'm going to show you how to do this um, in a second. Just write these down, and then we will move on. Okay. Okay. Sweet. All right. Now uh, some tips for you. Some tips for you. Okay. Excuse me. Some tips for you. So go ahead and write these down also. Excuse me. So. If you're stuck, all right, if you get stuck at any point and you're not exactly sure how to do the last part, the this suggest part to answer the question, you can literally use a word, all right, from this part to answer the question. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, so that's the first tip. If you get stuck, use a word from step four to help you in step five, meaning use a word from the connotations part to help you in the this suggest part. Okay, now finally, again, like I said uh, at the start, if the question asks you to comment or analyze language, comment on or analyze language, you can analyze the word choice. And I would recommend that you do that because it is the easiest thing to analyze. So if it asks you to comment on language or analyze language, analyze the word choice. Okay. So, and... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example answer. So make that your next heading, example answer. Okay, here is your question. And this is based on a quote from uh, Visiting Hour, which some of you might be doing. All right, so there was a word in there, which is the word pain. Okay, so go ahead and write this question down. Okay, and then here we do the steps. I right, so I'll put lines one to five. The line numbers are not correct, yeah, in terms of the poem. I can't remember where it comes from, but just to give you like sort of 
uh, a more realistic example. So, okay, so it says go to lines one to five. What does the writer say about the patient? Analyze word choice. So again, this could have said analyze language. Yeah, and that would be fine too. So we go there, we look for a bunch of different words. We see that the word pain is in there. Pain is kind of easy to break down. We all know kind of what pain means. That's kind of tragic. <laughs> we all know what pain means, yeah. So we take the word pain and we write it down, yeah. There's our first, uh, there's our key step once we've got the quote, yeah. So we write the, we write the word down. Now, what we want to do as much as we can is we want to stick to one word, okay, one word. So we write down one word, which is pain. Good. Then we go ahead and we say this relates to, and we give the connotations, yeah. We give the related words. So here it's heart, sadness, and vulnerability. So these are words that are related to pain. Okay, so then all we do, all right, so we say pain. What does pain mean? Pain is related to sadness, being hurt, being vulnerable. So then all we do is we just answer the question. Okay, what does the writer say about the patient? Now, again, easiest way to do this is just take, my bad, take one of the words from the related word part okay we take the word heart and we use that to answer the question we just quote the question and add on the little connotation this suggests the patient was very hurt that is all you have to do this here okay is a one mark answer and you can see here how the how the marking works this is for higher this is for higher so higher higher looks like that okay if you're doing that five, if you're doing national five, this year would be two marks. Okay. So if you're doing higher, you only get one mark. You don't get a mark for the quote by itself. All right. If you're doing that five, you get a mark for the quote and you get a mark for the explanation if the explanation is correct. So very easy. Yeah? This is why I tell you just do. Uh, word choice as much as you can any opportunity you get to use it use it yeah you don't get marked less for doing word choice like if you just do word choice again and again you do not get marked less uh, you only get marked less say for example if you like try and do two answers with the same quote like if you use pain uh, twice in the same question obviously you're not going to get the mark for that yeah okay now what I want you to know what I want you to keep in mind all right is the structure of your answer, it always looks like this, okay? These three steps. You have one word, you have this relates to, and then you have this suggests. It always looks like this. So it's important that you learn this and you do it uh, multiple times until you've got it, okay? And I'll show you, I'll show you another example answer. Okay, one thing also I want to mention, um, on the document it says NAT5 at the top. Some of you might be thinking, uh, you might be wondering, does this is this for NAT5 only or is this for higher? So the document, it just says NAT5, but these steps that I'm telling you, they apply for both. So NAT5 and higher, they're answered the same way. Okay, but aside from the five marker, there's no five mark question in NAT5 in RUE. But the rest of it is basically the same. They're just marked differently. And then also uh, at higher, the passage is slightly more complicated like and you do two of them yeah, instead of just one. Those are the differences. But in terms of the steps, they're actually the same. Yeah, Both of them are pretty simple. They're just basically what I've explained to you. Okay. Okay. Now here you can see, here you can see a more, an even more clearer, one, two, three, four, five. You can see an even clearer example of these steps. So again, write this. Right, uh, example uh, answer, okay. And um, here is the question. Okay, so write this question down. Write this question down. What does the writer's word choice tell you about professional football? And it's lines one to five, okay. You don't need to write this whole thing down. But what I want you to notice is, do you see how I've underlined a bunch of different options? So I've underlined different options. And for example, if this was a four mark answer, okay, 
And what I'll even do is da, 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 da. those who needed this routine picked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more just to make a point. Uh, of those who made it. Made it. Okay, so I picked one more, yeah. The race. Okay. There's another one. The race. It's kind of a metaphor, but we can flip it into word choice also. Okay, so now I've picked one, two, three, four, five, six. I've picked six. I've picked six different answers. Okay. I've picked six different answers that you could that you could that word, sorry, that you could zoom in on. Now, this is that this is the step that I told you um that what you want to do. You want to pick give yourself different options. All right. Now that we've got these different options, say the question has four marks. Yeah, it's a four mark question. Okay. What you want to do. How do you know how many answers to write? You base the number of answers on, all right, on the uh, marks. So if it's four marks, it means you need to write four answers, okay? That look like this. You need four of these, all right? So we give ourselves a bunch of options. We give ourselves more options than we need. So we give ourselves six options here. And then all we need to do is we just pick the easiest ones, yeah? So we pick the easiest four and we use those. Okay, so we're going to go with the word fraction. Okay, so again, you see one word. And then we have this relates to, okay, percentage and small amount. And then we just say, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to say the writer says, okay, uh, actually, actually, oh, wait, 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 my bad, my bad. Okay, don't copy that, don't copy that, yeah? I should keep it like this, yeah? This suggests that professional football is hard to be accepted into. And I can even flip this if we want to make it even sort of simpler, like based on what I told you before. That in professional football, or we'll say only a small amount of people make it into professional football, yeah? So you see again how I used the exact words from the connotations part to get the answer. It's that simple, okay? It is that simple. So again, use this formula. I know you might have been taught slightly differently, but this formula is like, it makes things very easy for you. It makes things very simple for you, no matter if you're doing Nat 5, if you're doing higher. And you can use this formula for very complicated text and very simple text uh, also. Okay, so that is word choice. Um, yes, okay, good. All right, now finally, the last thing that we're gonna look at is we're gonna now look at the five mark question. So go ahead and make your heading uh, five mark comparison question, okay. So this is this is now for, if you're doing that five, you don't need to watch this yet. If you're doing that five, um you've got enough now to uh, be able to pass your RUE exam. Uh all you need to do is just practice. Okay. You just need to practice a lot. And you have enough to um to do good slash well, yeah. Obviously you want to practice the other parts because you've got, you know, a couple months till your prelims, so practice the other parts too. Just make sure you zoom in on in your own words and word choice and you should be good to go yeah uh, it should also help you in your um in your what do you call it uh scottish text also okay but if you're doing that five you're finished yeah so you can you can log off this video you can stop watching this video okay if you're doing higher stay with me and and yes okay give me one second uh, it's not here because it's not not five yet. <laughs> All right, give me one second. And uh, let me get the higher done. Okay, so this question, this comparison question. Okay, what is the point of the question? So make your heading comparison question. Okay, here we go. So the point of the question is to compare between the two articles. Now what I'll do very quickly is I'll just show you an example and then I'll show you how to do it and then we will be finished. Okay, so here's an example question. Look at both passages and talk about how the writers uh, agree 
on intensive farming yeah so a couple of things you want to watch out for right away one is what does the question ask you uh, to focus on in this case it's intensive farming and then number two is you want to you want to have a look at what does the question ask you in terms of agree or disagree so what i would do okay uh Okay, let me tell you what the question is first of all in terms of before I give you the steps, yeah? Before I give you the actual steps. Okay, so write this down first of all. Write this down. Here's what the question is. Okay. So the question is, uh, sorry, the definition or the point of the question is to compare two articles based on how they agree or disagree on a topic. All right, that's what the question is based on. That's what it's about. Okay, now, what it's asking you to do in a very simplified form, all right? In a very simplified form, what it's asking you to do is it's asking you to point out slash explain three areas where the articles either agree or disagree. So go ahead and write these two things down. So this is the point of the question or like sort of the big picture look uh, of the at the question all right okay now how do you do the question itself how do you do the question itself okay here we go okay i'm going to add one which is underline okay so make your first uh subheading so write steps and then underneath that write preparation so you the process gets split up, okay, into two halves. One is preparation, where you're collecting the quotes and you're collecting the, the information you need. And then the other is like the steps itself, yeah? The, the writing part, the analysis part. Okay, underline, focus, question. And then the next part is gonna be underline, uh, agree or disagree. Okay. Okay, so what you want to do, first of all, all right, before you do anything else, is you want to go ahead and you want to underline what it is that the question is asking you to focus on. So in this case, it's intensive farming. Okay, like in this case, it's about music being played in public places, uh, being something that's not good. So you want to underline what is it that the questions ask you to focus on. Like in this case, it's about important qualities shared by political figures so underline that first of all yeah underline that first of all then what you want to do all right is you want to go ahead and you want to underline if it's asking you about agree or disagree alternatively what you could do is you could write it down on your page yeah so you could write the question question nine then write intensive farming and then write or views on intensive farming and then write agree just so that you know that this is what you're going to talk about now, why is that important to do? It's important to do because if you get one of those wrong, so if you start talking about something else, if you if it's asking about intensive farming, but you start talking about chickens or something else, or you talk about intensive farming, but you talk about how they disagree as opposed to agree, you won't get the mark yet. So you need both of these to be correct. All right. So it's very important that you make sure that you remind yourself um what it is you should be focusing on. And so either do that by underlining it or do it by writing it down. Okay, good. Now, once you've done that, now what you wanna do, all right, is you wanna go ahead. Let me see, do I have another version? No, I don't, okay, good. So what you wanna do now, all right, here are your actual sort of steps that you're gonna take. Now you know what you're focusing on. So write these down, yeah? Write these down. Okay. Go ahead and write these down. So what you do now, now you know, okay, I'm going to talk about intensive farming and how the writers agree on it. All right. Now what you do is you go to article one, yeah, the first passage, you skim read it. And as you're reading it, you write down three quotes that relate to three different points about intensive farming, for example. So three quotes, okay, related to the topic. All right. Like like this I'll show you so here we go to article one now 
the good thing is by this point you will be very familiar because the last question you're going to be very familiar with the two passages yeah because you've answered eight questions already on them so it's even a smart idea to use some of the quotes or to guide you yeah so in your word choice answers before you've already mentioned quotes you can use them yeah to guide you on like uh, on bigger points or even just use the quotes themselves if they are big enough to sort of uh, make a point in themselves yeah okay anyway so we go to article one we know it's talking about intensive farming okay cool we're reading it reading it looking for something to do with intensive farming okay and then we come here and boom we see this yeah crammed into barren pens on tiny patches of land there we go we have a first point that the writer's making so we write the quote down okay and even next to it you could write uh like a sort of little mini note just telling you so i write the quote and that could be like animals kept in cramped conditions boom like that yeah so i could take this quote and right next to it animals are kept in cramped conditions there is my first uh point yeah there's the first sort of um thing that i'm going to talk about uh when i get to the answer okay then i continue to read more continue to read more and i go ahead and I find this, okay, we have become addicted to cheap meat. So this is another kind of point due to intensive farming. We know our, our diets have changed. So you could take this quote, addicted to cheap meat. Right next to it, diets have changed. Now, again, this is just preparation. So it doesn't need to be neat. It doesn't need to be like, you know, proper. All this is for is just for your sort of self, uh, uh, when you're going to go to the actual answer itself. So you want to do this quickly, yeah, if you can. You want to try and do this quickly. And you should be able to do it quickly just because, again, by this point, you will have been working on the, um, you know, the exam for already an hour plus, yeah. So you will be familiar with the text. Okay, and then we go read more, read more. And we find that, uh, we read more, we find this, Okay. I saw a strange yellowish gray smog on the horizon. So we find that uh, intensive farming causes pollution. Boom, third point. Okay, now once we've done that, yeah, we've got our three quotes from the first article and we've written them down. Plus we know exactly sort of what they're talking about. Then what we go ahead and do, okay, is we do the same thing for the second article. Now this is even easier because we already know what we're gonna what we're going to focus on. All right. Now we know that we're going to talk about animals in cramped conditions, uh, cheap meat, and or sorry, diets have changed, and then pollution. So all we do now, okay, is we just go to the second article, okay, and we just look for anything related to those three things, yeah, anything related to those three things. So anything about uh, cramped conditions, here, look, uh, uh, two, five in the same space. Broiler chickens either worn out. Here we go. Yeah. The broiler chicken sheds expanded to cram vast acres of birds. There we go. Cram vast acres of birds. So cram vast acres of birds. Also here. Many beef and cattle. Same thing. So in the art in the original part, so we could say that there is these are two quotes about how originally intensive farming is bad, animals are treated really badly. And here we go. Same thing. Here's another option. Create systems. So the first guy says uh, cows are kept in little cramped conditions with this quote. Second guy says animals are, are uh, reared. Animals, um, animals are raised in crate systems. So there's our two quotes that are aligning. They agree with each other. Okay, now I very quickly just go ahead and look for something to do with diets. Here we go. Ba, ba, ba. Now, however, diseases, uh, coronary heart disease linked to our increased consumption of fatty foods. So again, we have something here agrees with the with the second quote. Yeah, this is talking about diets. Intensive farming has messed up our diets. Excuse me. And again, we look for the last part about pollution. We find something here again polluted waterways so we see once we have our three topics here our three quotes from the first guy 
then we know exactly what to focus on. And it's very easy for us just to look very quickly at the second article, find three other quotes and write those down also. Okay, now we are ready. Okay, now we are ready to answer the question. So here is the structure, all right, of your answer. Here is the structure of the answer. Okay, so go ahead and write these down, yeah? And let me see, is there an easier version? Okay, okay, here you go. Uh, yes. I'm going to flip this around a little bit just to make it a bit simpler. Okay, so the first thing to write down. Yeah, okay, cool. So here's what you do. Uh, identify area of agreement, disagreement. All right, identify area of agreement or disagreement. So this would be the first thing that we talked about, which would be uh, this, okay, animals are kept, are kept in cramped conditions. So here's what to write down, write this down. All right, and then you can write this down as like an example. So what I'll do is I'll put like, I'll put the, in fact, you know what I'll do? I'll keep this example for after. Let me keep this example for after. Make your life a bit easier. Okay, cool. Article one. Here you go. Explain article one quote. There you go. Okay, so here's your first thing to write down, yeah? So identify area of agreement, disagreement. Quote article one. Explain article one quote. Okay. Then what you want to do all right, is do this again. Uh, do this part again, sorry. But for article two, so one area of agreement or disagreement, quote the first person, explain the quote, and then quote the second person and explain that quote, yeah? So your answer looks like this. Okay, write this down, please. Your answer looks like this. Identify the area, quote the first article, and again, you've already got the quote there. So you just say, for example, Animals are, the writers agree, animals are kept in cramped conditions. There's your heading. Quote the first article, uh, crammed in barren pens. Explain the article. Writer one says that cows are kept in uh, small, uh, undersized sh uh, areas that are too small for them, something like that. And then, quote the second article, crates, writer two says that animals are raised in boxes, which are too small for them. And then finish, therefore we see that both writers agree uh, that animals are kept in bad conditions. Okay? That is literally all you do, and you do this, all right, three times. Okay? Three times. Now, I'm going to give you a little cheat code, okay? Doing this part here, okay, the heading, three of these headings, if they are correct, all right, gives you three marks. Three of these headings, if they are correct, gives you three marks. So if you are at the end of your exam, all right, and you are running out of time, all you need to do is just say three things, okay, and again, make sure that you know if it's agree or disagree. Just say, for example, if it's agree, if it's this question that we've been working on, three things they agree on about intensive farming, just write the headings. Yeah. The writers agree intensive farming leads to animals being kept in cramped conditions. One, the writers agree that intensive farming leads to uh, damage to the environment. Two, the writers agree that intensive farming leads to uh, poorer health due to our diets being, or the, it's impacted our diets, something like that, yeah. Three headings, boom, 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 agree, agree, and then the topic, that right there would be three marks, yeah, without the quotes, without anything else, three marks right there. Okay, now very quickly, what I'm going to do is just give you, um, like, the sort of example answer. So go ahead and write this as your example answer. Okay. There you go. And yes. Okay. And again, you want to do this three times, yeah? You want to do this. 
three times. Okay, so one title, uh, one quote, uh, one quote from each, and then an explanation of each quote. Okay, so here you go. You can pause the video, write this down. This is your example answer. Okay, and then you can write this down also. So this would be the quote from the second article. This is the explanation of the quote. There you go, yeah. Okay. So that is the comparison question. Again, you just repeat that three times with the different quotes. Again, just watch the video, and, you know, go back to the start. And then the most important thing you can do is practice and practice these skills with as many different texts as you can. Not just past papers, but any text that you've been given including your Scottish text, your poetry, uh, your drama, whatever, your, your play, uh, your essay text. Use these skills, yeah? You can use these skills, especially word choice and in your own words. You can use these skills to um, analyze them, yeah? And it's actually what you are going to use, especially the word choice one, to analyze. Okay, again, uh, I have spaces available um, for English, online English classes and again uh, i'm quite strict in terms of who i accept uh, as a student and um, you do need to show me that you're like serious serious about learning and um that you are respectful and hard working and so on yeah like i don't waste my time basically so anyway uh take these tips and share them share them with your friends share them with your friends I just literally gave you uh, what I've taught multiple students, including 14 different students last year who have predicted a D, a fail, complete fail. And many of them got A's and B's yet using these steps. Um, not to mention the other sort of 15 or whatever plus that just passed um, without being predicted a D, but they also passed and, you know, did well also. So pass this video on. Yeah, if you want to split it up, put it on TikTok or whatever, that's cool. Just share it and um, yeah, share it especially with those people who think that they're going to fail. Um, nothing is guaranteed. And if you put the work in, if you focus, if we do the reps, you can pass. Yeah. So just remember that. Okay, good luck. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care.